It's now time for our special guest on the phone. She was originally born in Portugal, actually, and then moved to London to pursue her career in music in 2015. And she's probably one of the most enthusiastic guests I've ever had on this show. No disrespect to anybody else, but she's absolutely buzzing for this. So welcome to the show. Good morning, Logan Parker. Good morning, Chris. Thank you so much. So happy to be on your show. (laughs) That's all right. You're welcome. How is everything going on? Yeah, pretty really good now. Um, yeah, out of lockdown, I've got a couple of gigs lined up. I'm playing on tomorrow, actually, in Shoreditch. Oh, very um, nice. So, yeah, back gigging, and it feels so good just to be out there, just performing. I don't know, seeing people. It's just, um, it feels great. It's just um, so good for a musician. Uh, I mean, a year that has been so difficult without playing live music. It, it really kills a musician, so I'm really happy to just be back playing gigs. It's, I, it's brilliant. I can imagine. So, yeah, what is it like post lockdown? Because didn't you you had a gig last week? I think it was seven uh, at Eccleston Yards Market. Indeed, yes. Yeah, how did how did that all go down? And what's the difference now with um, live music? Because obviously, so much has changed because of the restrictions that we still have. Indeed, it's true. So it was like an outdoor gig, and the weather was lovely um, in Victoria. Uh, it was such a beautiful market. Eccleston Yards is just so cute, and um, and everyone was just so excited to to be to be part of the gig and to be you know listening to live music. And I had such a wonderful reaction from from you know the fans there, and it was just so overwhelming. I was just so so happy. I think it was one of the best gigs I can remember because. It, it just felt so good. I think everyone was really, really happy just to be outdoors, enjoying the sunshine, listening to live music. It was just brilliant. I, I could imagine like beers flowing, everyone's like got good food, listening to music, and then yeah. just the whole vibe is just there. Yeah, indeed. And I think a musician needs this so much. Uh, we, I think we, we need this closure with, with uh, people. We need to feel that love and you can do live streams but it, it's not the same thing because you don't get people's reactions like in uh, real time and it's so good to see people's faces while they are enjoying your songs and yeah i had like one fan who came to me in the end and told me you know what logan i love your originals much better than your covers <laughs> and i was so happy i was like oh my god i love that <laughs> that's what artists wants to hear though don't exactly. they they want to hear their originals are better so um is that the best club crowd you've played to? You've ever played to, or? Mm, well, it's difficult to say. I think um, before the lockdown, I was playing a regular gig um, at the Bridge uh, in Shoreditch. Such an amazing venue, really um, picturesque, and um, like it looks like he came out of like a Quentin Tarantino movie. So I invite oh, everyone God. to visit. Oh God! Oh yeah, what are those? In Shoreditch, yeah, you're more than invited, Chris. Oh, I'm like. coming. When's your next one? <laughs> So on Saturday uh, from 9 p.m. and it's also like an outdoor gig. Um, they have like a beautiful beer garden and um, so Saturday, the Saturday. Okay. So, yeah. Is it resident? Is it every week? Well, if it goes well, the Saturday. Um, yeah, I'll do it every week. Let's see how it goes. It's okay. like a pilot. <laughs> okay. Well, pilot gig. Maybe not. I might be able to not make it this Saturday, but I'll book the next Saturday off and I'll come down. If he carries on, uh, I'll keep on inviting you. But, um, <laughs> every week. Yeah, I remember before um, this uh, last lockdown kicked in in November, it was my birthday and I just had like the most amazing gig there and everyone was just like so like enjoying the music, singing along and uh, it was just beautiful. I think that that was one of the best audiences I've ever got. So, um, so yeah, beautiful place. Definitely great, worth visiting and great energy. Yeah, it sounds great. Definitely coming down. So where did it all begin? Where was the start for you? Right, so um, yeah, so I was born in Portugal, um, sunny Portugal. I was actually stuck for three months there um, before I came here um, two weeks ago. I, w- I went f- to spend Christmas with my family, and I ended up staying longer because of the flight restrictions. And I wasn't able to get back. I get I got like three flights cancelled, and um, and yeah, it was kind of crazy, but uh, it was really good. Uh, but yeah, my family is Portuguese, and um, and my parents gave me a guitar when I was like seventeen. Uh, but, you know, they put me in the church choir when I was, or like, six. And I remember I loved it. I couldn't sleep at night before uh, the rehearsals. And when we had performances, I just felt like the most special person on earth <laughs> just to be able to step on stage uh, with the other kids. And I really, really loved it. I loved, like, you know, learning the songs and singing them. And 
yeah, just getting that feeling of being on stage at such an early age is it's it's really addictive. So so I get I guess that really put me into music uh, to start with, and then later on, seventeen, I start writing my new my my own songs on my guitar, and yeah, and then my mom she kind of got start she started like getting me gigs, and she was like, "You ready to gig? I'm gonna get you gigs." And I remember I was a really shy teenager, and I was like, no, mom, please, I, I really want to be just in my bedroom, just playing my music. And she was like, no, no, you're ready to go. And she got me a bunch of gigs, and I was really bad. <laughs> That's the hardest thing, though, getting first out there, though, and getting those first few gigs out of the way, I assume. Yeah, it's true. And then I remember just, I was just so terrible. I was really, I had this really crazy, like, st- stage fright, and, um, and she would come to me in the end, and she would be ruthless, and she would say... Why didn't you talk to people? You didn't present yourself. You didn't even say anything. You're just like, you need to change this. You need to be a good performer because you can do it. And then after a while, I kind of like, I got into that routine of practicing and practicing the things I would say to kind of overcome the stage fright. And then eventually I, I, I managed to do like a successful gig where everyone was enjoying it and I was really into it. And then And then that's how it happened for me. And since then... I've been craving to perform live. I think it's one of the best things for a musician. There we go. That that is one of the finest things. I've done a couple of open mics myself, and I'm absolutely... I was terrified. Absolutely terrified. But how would people, like, identify your music? Like, what what genre and what vibe do they go for? I think they really understand um, the language. I think they really understand that I've got, like, so many uh, soul influences, but also, like... 70s, 60s, uh, 70s rock and roll, and mostly because I grew up listening to this kind of music. Um, and and I think we really um, engage with the lyrics and the message um, that my songs have because they're so personal, and I think they're really honest. Um, and I think people people like that. I think people like when you're, like, straightforward and honest and you just speak up your mind, and that's what I do with music. Because I'm, I'm a shy person, so... Um, so I think music allows me to be completely carefree and honest and just like, you know, to get out there without any concern of what others might think. Because after all, it's a work of art now and it's just not my own experience. It's a poem. So, so yeah, I think that really motivates me. And I'm glad people, people enjoy it. Yeah, I'm glad they do. Um, so your brand new release, Walking Alone, is that like you opening up in a way or what's the story behind it? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I wrote Walking Alone like... Uh, a couple of years ago, before I came here, actually, and I remember I was going through, like, a breakdown. I was really uh, depressed and uh, and sad. And, um, yeah, I remember then I was just, like, hitting people with my demo and just, you know, trying to get, like, a break and opportunity. And people were being really ruthless and mean, and they were just, like, being really hard on criticism. And I think for a young, a really young musician that can sometimes you don't have what it takes to deal with that criticism. I'm sure people don't have a bad intention when they do that. I'm I'm sure they have the best of intentions, which is, you know, for you to improve your craft. But back then I was really hurt. And and I was going through some personal issues as well. And then I wrote Walking Alone. Um, And I think it's a really, really, like, it's very straightforward. It's like an outburst of someone who's really on the verge of something uh, really difficult to deal with and at the time I couldn't speak up I couldn't tell how I was feeling to anyone um, and that was my way of you know venting and just getting things out of my chest and after I wrote the song I felt so much better and um, yeah and the response has been incredible I had so many musicians actually contacting me and say Logan those lyrics are exactly my life and thank you so much for releasing the song I really feel identified with it uh, so yeah, it's it's really really um, heartwarming to get this sort of feedback when you put something like walking alone out, and um, yeah, and I dedicated it to the memory of Sarah Everard. Um, at at the time, she she was on the news, and it was so sad to see this young woman walking home alone, and then she got killed in the, mm. in such a terrifying, horrible way. So so I think I think it's truly. Um, on a song that has this really 60s kind of groove the drums and bass kick in in the song 
And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. I think really. people are going to love it. I think like in a minute when we play it, we're going to love it. So we'll play it after. The, we're going to play it after the news. But I've got one more question for you. So how do how do people find your song? How do they find your music? And what's in store for Logan Park in the next few months? Um. Right. So I, I'm really lucky to have like the the greatest fans ever. They're just so sweet. All, all through lockdown, I've been like doing like live streams, and they've been so wonderful. They've they've been buying my CDs. You can actually here's an invitation for everyone listening. You can buy my music on my website loganjparker.com. I have like a limited edition of my EP in vinyl. Um, so yeah, and people have been so supportive and so kind, and I just feel so grateful. Um, and I, I just want I just want to get into the next level because there's only so much you can do by yourself. And as an independent musician, the road gets really tough sometimes because you have to fund yourself. You have to do everything yourself, and it can get really, really um, difficult sometimes. So I would love to find a manager and an agent and maybe a label. I don't know, just to kind of help me, you know, with the next steps. Uh, because I really want to reach a bigger audience. I really want to connect with people more than anything. I want to. I want people to listen to my music. Um, so yeah, that would be great. Um, and thank you so much, Chris, That's for right. giving me this opportunity and for playing my music. You've been so kind ever since I contacted you. <laughs> you were so open and so generous. So thank you so much. You made my day. That's and all I'm right. I try to. I try to. <laughs> I tried to. Well, fingers crossed things will pick up for you, and we'll definitely get you back on the show soon. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. That's, Thank you so much for this. That's for all right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. That's all right. Well, um, take care of yourself, and we'll definitely hear from you soon. Thanks for coming on. And you too. All the best to you, Chris. And all the best to Susie Radio. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks, Logan. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Okay, that was Logan Parker who was on the show. And definitely check out her website, loganparker.com. All her social medias, she's popping on there all the time. So definitely check her out and her new release, Walking Alone, which we're going to play after the news, which is up now. (laughs) 